everybody, I'm Lily Rose and welcome back to a new video. Long time no see, I know, but how you doing? How is summer going? Well, at least for anyone here up in the Northern Hemisphere. Do you have any trips planned? Anything fun for the summer? I'm actually going next week on a girls trip. I'm so excited, but I have to admit I'm a little bit worried about my documents because I'm known to lose stuff, so that's not fun. So that's actually why I decided to create my own little do-it-yourself travel wallet or passport wallet and so I can always keep all my documents together. But before we jump into the tutorial, as always, if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe, come and be part of the growing family, join us, we're fun, we're loving people, and now let's start. Let's start with the pink one, since I think it's the easier one. To begin, you will need some crafting foam. Measure out a rectangle that is 20 and a half by 15 centimeters or in inches 8 by 6 inches. By the way, all passports have the same size, so don't worry about this fitting your passport. You will also need to cut out two triangles. To do so, measure out a 6 centimeter or 2.5 inch square and then cut it in half. And also another rectangle, this one measures 6 by 15 centimeters or 2.6 inches by 6 inches. Take the bigger foam piece and fold it in two. Press down on the fold so it creates an imprint and it will basically allow you to know where the middle is and divide it into, you know, the front and the back of your wallet. Print out a text or an image that you would like on your wallet. I went for that oh so used pun of Aloha Beaches. By the way, do not throw out any kind of excess paper that ended up unused. These make awesome little notebooks. I'm actually working on a video for this and I will link it here once it is up. To transfer the writing, let's use that good old trick of using a pencil on the back to create your very own do-it-yourself transfer paper. Now position it where you want it on your wallet and attach it with some tape. Get out your pencil and start tracing your design. Keep checking to see if everything has transferred properly and then remove the paper. Now with nail polish or acrylic paint, draw out your text or design. I actually used nail polish for this since I wanted it to be kind of glossy compared to the rest, but truth be told, you can't even tell the difference and it was way more work, so I actually recommend just use acrylic paint. But yeah, if you don't have any and you do have nail polish, it actually works pretty well. It's just a lot more work. Once the text was done, I decided that I wanted to add a little bit of a pattern to it. For this, simply use some acrylic paint again and draw out little palm trees or something similar that you want around the foam. I decided to make it in a completely random pattern. Once everything is dry, it's time to attach the inside compartments of your wallet. Take the rectangle and fold it in half, just as before, so you know where the middle line is. At this point, we should also cut out little triangles on one of the sides, but I kind of forgot to do that here. But I got it right on the marbled one, um, so you'll see that in a second. At this point, you want to apply glue to three of the sides and also the middle line we just created. 
leaving one side without glue, which will be the opening. As adhesive, I used super glue since it is super fast and super strong. And however, in retrospect, I would say it's not the best glue to work with. For one, you're constantly scared to glue your fingers together. And if you don't work fast enough, the foam pieces end up kind of crooked. And I feel like just the overall look, not the best one, especially later on with the Velcro. So I would recommend something like E6000 or possibly even hot glue if you don't have an alternative. The only reason I didn't use hot glue right now was because I feel like it would give the foam a little bit of like a bumpy look and that's not exactly what I wanted. And yeah, this is the part that should have been done before, but hey, no harm done. Just cut out some triangles on each little compartment. Just as we did before with the glue, now attach the triangles to the other side of your wallet. When everything is dry and if somewhere the two pieces of foam didn't quite align, you can now cut off the excess with a craft knife or some scissors. As a closing mechanism, I decided to go for the simple route here and just use some Velcro. And actually, red Velcro, so it goes with the theme and is super cute. I cut out two squares of each of the velcro parts and then attach the four pieces to the foam. This works great with just glue or again E6000 or similar. Super glue kind of ruined the red coloring of the velcro which was kind of sad. A little trick to apply everything symmetrically is just first apply two pieces on one side. Now basically just take the other foam side, close the wallet and press it down. And basically the Velcro will create a little bit of like an imprint on the foam and you can use it as your guide. And yeah, once everything is dry, your travel wallet or passport wallet or whatever you want to call it is done. Now the bougie one, the marbled wallet. As before, you will need to cut out a 20 and a half by 15 centimeter rectangle or a six by eight inch rectangle, but this time use white foam or well, slightly grayish that looked in the store white, but for some reason at home is suddenly gray. Don't know what happened, but I mean, I can work with it. For this wallet, I decided to go for a slightly different look, so I cut out two rectangles of 6 by 15 centimeters or 2.6 inches by 6 inches. The marble look I actually painted onto the foam as I don't believe there is marble foam or is there? To do so, you will need a fluffy paintbrush, some black acrylic paint and some water. So after two failed attempts of what did 
definitely not look like marble, I finally figured out the trick. And I'll do my best to explain it. It's a little bit weird, but yeah, I think like looking at the video probably will help you more than my explanations, but I'll do my best. Mix a tiny bit of acrylic paint with lots and lots of water. You want this to be mostly water with just a teeny tiny bit of color. In this case, definitely less is more. Draw some very fine and random lines onto the foam. Make sure that they kind of always go into the same direction because I felt like whenever I would just go too random, it just did not look real. So, I mean, obviously some little parts, like some little veins will go like across or something, but like the main idea is always into like the same direction. Once you paint on a line, put your brush into water and then go along one of the sides of the line you just created and blend it out. Like I said, just one side, do not blend over the line, just blend on one side of the line. Leave the other side this like completely kind of like harsh line. Basically what will happen is it creates those little like veins that we see on marble and by leaving one side more like harsh, the color will dry there and yeah, it looks like that little vein. Let this layer dry and then wherever you feel like it needs a little bit more, just keep adding until you're happy and you end up with something like this. As before, take one of the rectangles and fold it in the middle. Then cut out a triangle while it is still folded to make it symmetrical. And yes, this is the part that I should have done before in the pink video and I forgot, but as you see, Doing it like this, way easier than doing it later. For this wallet, I decided to use the good old needle and thread and hand sew some lines. I feel it makes it look a lot fancier and gives it a really nice touch. The first line I decided to sew is basically a division between the two card compartments on that rectangle that we just created. Obviously this step is completely optional but I think it just gives the whole wallet a little bit of extra bouginess. For this I used a very simple and basic stitch that probably has a name but I don't know it but yeah just a basic stitch. Also, obviously you can use a sewing machine if you have one. It would definitely make your life a lot easier, but I don't own one now, so I just did it all by hand and it was oddly therapeutic and relaxing, so that's awesome. And it was a lot faster than I thought. To finish it off, I used a teeny tiny drop of glue to just hold everything together. To make sewing around the wallet easier, I decided to use some glue first and glue the rectangles in place. So basically one on each side of the wallet. It might be a little bit of an overkill, but it definitely made sewing a lot easier. To sew around the wallet, I obviously needed a guide, because let's be honest, if I didn't use a guide, the line would end up wobbly and not very professional looking. So to do so, I decided to measure out 0.5 millimeters of an edge and then mark it with my ruler as I did before. You could also probably use something like chalk, which I didn't think of at that moment, so I just used my ruler. And if you're thinking right now, why on earth didn't you just use a pencil? <laughs> well, the reason is 
Basically, pencil is quite hard to remove from foam, even if you use an eraser, so I just decided to look for an alternative. Again, get out your needle and thread and start sewing a reversible stitch. I think that's what it's called. Basically, what you will do is a very basic up and down kind of stitch all around. This won't look very good at first, but don't worry, it's normal that it kind of leaves those gaps in between stitches. We will correct that in the second round because it ends up kind of like filling those gaps. This took me about 35 minutes if I'm not wrong, so enough time to just, you know, relax, watch an episode of your favorite TV show while doing it, and come on, how freaking fancy does this look? I mean, it looks right away so much more expensive, and it's just made out of foam. After you finish the first round, as I said before, we will do a second round and basically fill in those spaces and gaps in between stitches. The second round is super fast as you already have the holes from the previous stitches and you really don't have to worry about getting the line straight, so it's just filling in those gaps. To close the wallet, Velcro is awesome, but not bougie enough, so I decided to use an elastic. Measure out a piece of elastic. Now glue one end of it to the back of the wallet and let it dry. Once it is dry, attach the second end of the elastic with some glue and make sure that you don't leave it too loose. You don't want it to be too tight because in that case it will make the foam kind of curve and that's not really pretty. But if it's also too loose, it won't do its purpose because your documents won't be secured inside. And once this is also dry, you're done. Your expensive looking do-it-yourself travel wallet is ready for takeoff. By the way, which one was your favorite? The cutie pink one or the fancy marble one? Let me know in the comments below. Honestly, I can't decide between the two. I am actually still trying to figure out which one of them I'm going to take on my trip. Cause I mean, I'm not, going to be that extra and take them both or maybe I will anyway I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and also subscribe if you haven't already because I love you guys and I see you next time bye